Hello and welcome to Jonathan's Arrow, where we aim to shoot for the truth of the whole Word of God. In today's study, we are going to be looking into Proverbs chapter 26. But before we do, let us go to the Lord in prayer and prepare our hearts for this study today. Dear Lord, my God and my Redeemer, I want to thank you and praise you for your glorious grace in my life. And I want to thank you for allowing me to be a minister of your holy, righteous, and truthful word. Lord God, I pray mightily that you would continue to lead and guide in this study today and give us of your wisdom. As I pray these things in your precious, holy, and righteous name, Lord Jesus, I pray. Amen. Let us begin by reading Proverbs chapter 26. As snow in summer, and as rain in harvest, so honor is not seemly for a fool. As the bird by wandering, and as the swallow by flying, so the curse causeless shall not come. A whip for the horse, a bridle for the ass, and a rod for the fool's back. Answer not a fool according to his folly, lest thou also be like unto him. Answer a fool according to his folly, lest he be wise in his own conceit. He that sendeth a message by the hand of a fool cutteth off the feet and drinketh damage. The legs of the lame are not equal, so is a parable in the mouth of fools. As he that bindeth a stone in a sling, so is he that giveth honor to a fool. As a thorn goeth up into the hand of a drunkard, so is a parable in the mouth of fools. The great God that formed all things both rewardeth the fool and rewardeth transgressors. As a dog returneth to his vomit, so a fool returneth to his folly. Seest thou a man wise in his own conceit? There is more hope of a fool than of him. The slothful man saith, There is a lion in the way. A lion is in the streets. As the door turneth upon his hinges, so doth the slothful upon his bed. The slothful hideth his hand in his bosom, it grieveth him to bring it again to his mouth. The sluggard is wiser in his own conceit than seven men that can render a reason. He that passeth by and meddleth with strife belonging not to him is like a one that taketh a dog by the ears. As a madman who casteth firebrands, arrows, and death, so is the man that deceiveth his neighbor, and saith, Am not I in sport? Where no wood is, there the fire goeth out, so where there is no talebearer, the strife ceaseth. As coals are to burning coals, and wood to fire, so is a contentious man to kindle strife. The words of a talebearer are as wounds, and they go down into the innermost parts of the belly. Burning lips and a wicked heart are like a potsherd covered with silver dross. He that hateth dissembleth with his lips, and layeth up deceit within him. When he speaketh fair, believe him not, for there are seven abominations in his heart. Whose hatred is covered by deceit, his wickedness shall be showed before the whole congregation. Whoso diggeth a pit shall fall therein, and he that rolleth a stone it will return upon him. A lying tongue hateth those that are afflicted by it, and a flattering mouth worketh ruin. Going back to Proverbs chapter 26, verse number 1, we read, As snow in summer, and as rain in harvest, so honor is not seemly for a fool. Now remember that the word seemly means to be normal, or beautiful, or good, or, or natural. And so therefore what we see here is that the Bible is saying as snow in summer and as rain in harvest. So honor is not seemly for a fool. Fools have no honor. That's just most important to be understood. However, this is also saying that it is as unseemly for a fool to have honor is, uh, as it is for snow to fall in summer, in the heat of the day even or for rain to fall in harvest, when it should be snowing, when there should be that cold, and there should be that fall and winter weather. That's how unseemly it is for a fool to have honor in his life. Fools don't have honor because foolish behavior is dishonorable. Verse number two. As the bird by wandering, as the swallow by flying, so the curse causeless shall not come. Your causeless curses are just wasted breath. They're going to wander to and fro in the air as if you're speaking in the wind. 
and that's all you're doing. Because the fact of the matter is, is that something that a lot of people don't really particularly understand today is that just like how we can bless folks and we can bless the Lord and we can bless our own selves, we can also curse folks and we can curse the Lord and we can curse our own selves. And you, the problem is, is that God will honor your curses that you put on other folk when those folk deserve it. However, God still would prefer it if we just lived in nothing but blessing. And that's all we did was bless others and we blessed God. Even if we could not bless others, just bless God. But the fact of the matter is, is that if your curse that you want to give someone else because of their wicked and evil deeds is for no cause or no good reason, it will not come. Regardless, God does not grant our wishes. He's not a genie. He is not magical in that way. He does not do what we call and ask him for. He does what is best in his will for us in our lives. And the curse causeless shall not come. Verse number three. A whip for the horse, a bridle for the ass, and a rod for the fool's back. These are tools of reigning in. Some are tools of reigning in evil, and some are just tools of reigning in regardless. You rein in a horse with a whip. You get it to do what you want it to do with a whip. A lot of people think that's wrong. A lot of people think that's abuse. No, that's just taking care of animals properly. Animals are foolish things. They do not have intelligence. They are not sentient like we are. They, only have a, they don't have a conscience or a reason. They only are conscious life who have instinct. And their instinct isn't to obey and do what we say. However, that is their purpose. So a whip used for a horse to rein a horse in, or a bridle for an ass to rein an ass in, and a rod for the fool's back. That rod is used to beat a fool with because fools need to be hit. It's just like how the Bible tells us that foolishness is bound in the heart of children. But the rod of correction shall drive it far from them. The fact of the matter is, is that fools will not learn their lesson from being beat. But that does not exclude them from that punishment. Oftentimes they are nothing but wicked and have chosen to be that way. Children can be taught. Grown folks who have decided to be foolish cannot be. But... It is very true and very important that if you leave the wicked unpunished, they will continue to do more and more and more wicked. Verses 4 through 5. Answer not a fool according to his folly, lest thou also be like unto him. Answer a fool according to his folly, lest he be wise in his own conceit. Acting like a fool to defeat a fool makes you look like a fool. And guess what? It also justifies the fool you mock. This is the reason why people have coined the term, don't stoop to other people's levels. God said it first, friend, and this is where you can find it. Verses 4 and 5 and chapter 26 of Proverbs. If you stoop to the level of a fool, you will look like a fool, and that fool will then be justified. Well, I thought you were a Christian. I thought you were a good man, but now you're looking just like me. Verse number six, he that sendeth a message by the hand of a fool cutteth off the feet and drinketh damage. Can we see a little bit of a pattern here? This chapter is all about dealing with fools. And verse number six is telling us that you curse others by sending foolish messengers. You see, the Bible says here, he that sendeth a message by the hand of a fool cutteth off the feet and drinketh damage. Well, why? Well, because that fool could lose that message, or interrupt that message, or purposely send that message somewhere else, or refuse to take the message, so on and so forth. There are many different ways to do this. And you're basically, God using an exaggeratory statement here, you're cutting off the feet and drinking damage. You are drinking damage. You are causing issue. You are causing problem in the lives of others by sending a fool with the message you have need to be sent. Verse number seven, the legs of the lame are not equal, so is a parable in the mouth of fools. Fools use parables wrong. They are uneven in meaning, just as the lame have uneven legs or uneven arms. 
The fact of the matter is that God isn't making fun of the lame. God created the lame. God created the blind, the deaf, the seeing, and the hearing. God has created us all for a good purpose. And that purpose is something we cannot really truly understand without delving deep into the Word of God. However, God is making an example here to show us that just like the legs of the lame are not equal, one is usually bigger than the other, or one is usually crooked or something or another, so is a parable in the mouth of fools. Fools cannot keep their meaning straight when they try to give you their own version of morality. Verse number 8. As he that bindeth a stone in a sling, so is he that giveth honor to a fool. That sling with a bound stone is as useless as honoring a fool. The fact of the matter is, is that I could bind a stone in a sling, nice and neat and tight, and still use that sling as some sort of like whip or battering device, but it would not be functioning as a sling anymore, because a sling is a small leather pouch with ribbons attached to it or cord attached to it that you tie together and that you use to put a rock in that, that leather pouch and then you twirl it around and release some of those cords so that the rock will go slinging at a very fast uh, pace. It was basically ancient bullets, ancient weaponry of firearm technology if you want to look at it that way. fact of the matter is, is that if you bind a stone in a sling, you are binding it in there. You are wrapping it up, tying it so that it will not come out. It is no longer a sling. That is stupid. Why would you do that? You could, do, you could just get a mace. You could get a sword. You could get anything else that would be far more effective than doing that. That's what God is talking about here. You are dishonoring. You are creating a useful tool into a useless tool. Therefore, just like giving an honor to a fool is useless. Verse 9. As a thorn goeth up into the hand of a drunkard, so is a parable in the mouth of fools. Fools continue to harm with their quote-unquote morality and what they believe is right. Parables in the mouth of fools are not equal, and their parables will harm folks. Because if you follow that, if you follow those adages, like how people see all over social media and all over uh, news and celebrities and, and movies and video games and TV and media today, all different kinds of different adages, especially from religions that aren't Christi Christianity. Uh, the reason being is because the devil wants us to look away from the truth. But if you follow those adages, you are going to be susceptible to the foolishness that they bring. And they are all foolish because none of them are gods. Verse number 10. The great God that formed all things both rewardeth the fool and rewardeth transgressors. God will reward evil with evil. That's all this is talking about here. A lot of people think that reward automatically means you're going to get some kind of blessing or you're going to win the lottery or you're going to you know, be blessed because you did right. No, reward just means the consequence of your action, basically. The fact of the matter is, is that evil folk, transgressors, sinners, all those who hate God will be rewarded evil for evil just like those who are good will be rewarded good for good. That's how God works. You reap what you sow. Verse number 11. As a dog returneth to his vomit, so a fool returneth to his folly. How foolish a fool is that God can make a comparison between a man and a dog. That's how foolish fools are. Dogs, again, just like any other animal, are not sentient. They are not human beings. They do not have eternal souls. The fact of the matter is, is that as a dog returneth to his vomit, as foolish as a dog will do this, so a fool returneth to the consequences of his foolishness. That's what folly is. Consequences of his foolishness. The things that have caused him harm because he is in foolishness, he's going to return to that. That's how disgusting, that's how abominable, that's how wicked, and that's how absolutely stupid these people are. That you're willing to return to the evil that you have uh, committed. This is no different than a, a drunk man getting drunk every single day. And every single day he has a massive hangover and he can't help but feel like the worst ever. Every single day. 
And he, but yet he returns to it. He returns to it. Because he is seeking out the foolishness and forgetting the folly. Verse number 12. Seest thou a man wise in his own conceit? There is more hope of a fool than of him. A fool is more likely to do right than a conceited man. That's absolutely true. Fools are still bad. God's not saying suddenly that fools are not bad. But seest thou a man wise in his own conceit? A man that says, I am wise above God. I, I know better than God. I know better than the Bible. There is more, more hope of a fool than of that man. Amen. Verses 13 through 16. The slothful man saith, There is a lion in the way. A lion is in the streets. As the door turneth upon his hinges, so doth the slothful upon his bed. The slothful hideth his hand in his bosom. It grieveth him to bring it again to his mouth. The sluggard is wiser in his own conceit than seven men that can render a reason. This set of verses here, verses 13 through 16, is talking about the way of the slothful man and how that slothful men are evil, what they do and what they will do in order to get out of things. Like, for instance, the, the slothful man will say it. There is a lion in the way. A lion is in the streets. I can't get out of my home. I can't go to work. I can't do anything because I might be killed out there. There might be somebody somewhere who might mug me. That's what a slothful man will say to excuse himself from doing something. And then God gives us a little bit of a glimpse of his humor here. As, a, as the door turneth upon his hinges, so doth the slothful upon his bed. A slothful man is so lazy that all of his life revolves around, oh, well, I gotta turn to the right. Ah, uh, my refrigerator's over here. Oh, gotta turn to the left so I can watch my TV. Oh, gotta turn to the right. Gotta turn to the left. That's all he's doing. So lazy, he won't even get up out of bed. And then the slothful man hideth his hand in his bosom. It grieveth him to bring it again to his mouth. What is this talking about? This is talking about a slothful man having food in his hand. Food in his hand. And he is so lazy that he is unwilling to bring his hand from his chest to his mouth to feed himself. That's how lazy he is. That, that, that's utterly preposterous. Humorous. But po preposterous. Like, to, to think about somebody being this lazy. But they exist. And it is a shame. Verse number 17. He that passeth by and meddleth with strife belonging not to him is like one that taketh a dog by the ears. Taking a dog by the ears can cause you to be bitten, just like meddling and strife can bite you. It can cause you woe and issue and problems and sorrow. He that passeth by and meddleth with strife belonging not to him is like one that taketh the dog by the ears. You will be bitten by that strife. You might end up getting yourself into a situation you can't handle. Verses 18 through 19. As a madman who casteth firebrands, arrows, and death, so is the man that deceiveth his neighbor, and saith, Am not I in sport? A man who deceives and proceeds to joke about the matter is a destructive man, and that's what this is talking about here. A lot of people don't know what this is talking about because this this is not something, th these aren't phrases we use today, am, am not I in sport. Or basically what we would be saying today is like, I'm, I'm just playing a game with you or I'm joking with you. It's the same thing. And if you really looked at it, if you really saw what God is saying here, it, it's, it's the same thing. It's just more regal. It's more formal. And the fact of the matter is, is that God is telling us here that if you deceive your neighbor and then joke about it, oh, oh I, I wasn't being serious, I wasn't being serious, I'm just joking, you are no different than a destructive man who is casting death to others. Now, this doesn't mean that God is against jokes or telling jokes or having humor. This is not talking about that. This is talking about a man who's deceiving his neighbor on purpose. He's deceiving him. He's saying, you know, look, I'll help you. I can give you this uh, milk that you need to be borrowed. Oh, wait, I'm just joking. Ah, you know, I'll help you. I'll come over. I'll, I'll, I'll make sure I fix this for you. And then you don't. You're deceiving, you're deceiving, and you're deceiving. That's where this is a problem. God has no problem, no issue with jokes and humor. 
God isn't saying those things are, are bad. He isn't saying jokes and humor are bad. He's saying when you deceive other folk and make a joke out of it, that's when it's bad. Verse number 20. Where no wood is, there the fire goeth out. So where there is no talebearer, the strife ceaseth. Somebody who is a talebearer is somebody who tales tall tales. He just lies, a gossiper. And this is just basically saying where there is no gossiper, where there is no tall tailor, there is no strife. There is no issue. There is no fighting. Because guess what? He doesn't, he's not there. He's not capable of giving a tall tale and ruining people's lives and perceptions if he is not there. Where there is no talebearer, there the strife ceaseth. Verse number 21. As coals are to burning coals, and wood to fire, so is a contentious man to kindle strife. Contentious folk start fights. That's what this is talking about. God doesn't want us to be around contentious folk because all they want to do is strive with one another. They want to fight. They want to harm. That's all they want to do. That's all contentious folk seem to want to do, no matter what. Verse 22. The words of a talebearer are as wounds, and they go down into the innermost parts of the belly. Talebearers cause harm with their gossip, with their rumors, with their tall tales. And the reason why they cause harm is because it hurts. It hurts when you hear somebody say something about you that is no good, that is a lie, that is a fib. And all that does is destroy. It ruins. It harms. And it makes people question the validity of their friendship with people that you're ta telling tall tales about. Tall tales have caused many friendships, many relationships, even marriages, to become disrupted. That's despicable. That's disgusting. Refrain from being a, ta a tale bearer. That is sin and disgusting sin because all it does is destroy folks in their lives. Verse 23. Burning lips and a wicked heart are like a potsherd covered with silver dross. Both are useless. Everything here, God's just saying this is useless. A burning lips and a wicked heart are like a potsherd covered with silver dross. Well, silver, a potsherd covered with silver dross is useless. You can't use it. It is clay pottery and with, with silver dross all over it, you're not going to use that. You don't want shavings of silver in your food or whatever you're putting into that pot. It's not going to work. It's useless. You have to take that out. You have to remove that, just like you have to remove a burning, burning lips and a wicked heart from yourself before you become a, a useful and well-favored man. Amen. Verses 24 through 26. He that hateth dissembleth with his lips, and layeth up deceit within him. When he speaketh fair, believe him not, for there are seven abominations in his heart. Whose hatred is covered by deceit, his wickedness shall be showed before the whole congregation. Don't believe hateful folk. Folks, that's what this is talking about here. He that hateth dissembleth with his lips, and layeth up deceit within him. Do not believe hateful folk. They will deceive you, and they will be caught in their deceptions. That's what this is saying. Verses 24 through 26 is telling us those things. When he speaketh fair, believe him not. For there are seven abominations in his heart, whose hatred is covered by deceit. He is saying, I love you, you're a good person. This is why the Bible tells us that the faithful are the wounds of a friend, but the kisses of an enemy are deceitful. Because your enemy will tell you you're doing good when you're not. Your friend will tell you you're not doing good and you need to improve. And then it says his wickedness shall be showed before the whole congregation. He shall be caught before everyone. You cannot hide your sins. God will not let you hide your sins. Verse number 27. Whoso diggeth a pit shall fall therein, and he that rolleth a stone it will return upon him. When you do these things... An evil to harm others with malicious intent. You're, you're digging a pit so people will fall therein, and you're rolling a stone so it will be rolled onto other folk. They will trap you instead. These things will happen to you instead. The Bible tells us that if we live by the sword, we die by the sword. 
And that's not talking about the sword of justice. That's not talking about protecting and defending the innocent. That's talking about going and murdering people. That's the reason why people who live by the sword die by the sword, because they're murderers, not because they're defenders. Defenders don't die by the sword because they're living by the sword to defend others. Murderers do. And these wicked folk are going to get exactly what they deserve. Verse 28. A lying tongue hateth those that are afflicted by it, and a flattering mouth worketh ruin. Liars hate those that don't believe them, and flattery destroys people. That's what God is telling us here. And that's all he's trying to get across with flattery and lying and all these things. Lying destroys people. Lying harms folks. And liars hate people who don't believe their lies. It's humorous. You're telling people lies, but you're mad that they don't believe you in your lies. How humorous. And flattery destroys people. A lot of people don't understand this. They don't understand why it is that flattery is a bad thing. Well, because, just like the Bible says, and we will be getting there very soon, faithful are the wounds of a friend, but the kisses of an enemy are deceitful. The kisses of an enemy is flattery. Telling somebody they look good when they don't is flattery, and it's no good. You're just puffing somebody up to make them feel good about themselves for no apparent reason. Or telling that somebody that they've done good when they've done nothing but bad is doing the exact same. God would prefer us to be truthful with one another, even if that truth hurts, even if that truth separates and divides and, and breaks people apart and breaks up friendships and relationships. I would rather folks tell me the truth about what they, what they understood and what I was doing right and wrong than people to just come up to me and kiss up to me. That's silly. I don't want somebody to kiss up to me. I've never wanted somebody to kiss up to me. I don't want people to tell me that I'm so, such a good man if I was no good. Now, there are a whole lot of people who are willing to tailbear about you. They will tell you things that aren't true. That's not truth. That, that's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about refusing to flatter people with lies. Give folks the truth, rather. Proverbs chapter 26 deals with fools and their foolishness and the folly of it all, and exactly why it is that we should not have any part in it. God is warning us who they are and how we should take care around them. If you act like a fool to a fool, you will not only become a fool, but you will justify fools. Pretty confusing if you don't really think about it. But once you think about it, it makes a whole lot of sense. Don't stoop to the level of fools. Be better than those around you living in their sin. No child of God should keep company with, with the fools of this world and of the modern day. That's just something we all should be saying a great big amen to. Sin shaming has gone away, and it's unfortunate that it has, because a whole lot of wickedness and evil and vile intent and disgusting abominable things in this world have been made to look as though they are normal, while good Christian folk who are doing nothing but good for the Lord Jesus Christ are being made to look like the oddball and no good. That's such a shame. And it's honestly such a shame that so many Christians, quote-unquote, are willing to follow those kinds of concepts and ideals. I would dare say that God is looking upon this world and upon Christians especially today and saying, repent, repent, and repent. And we better do it before it is everlasting too late. I want to thank you for joining me today as we took a deep dive into the study of the book of Proverbs chapter 26 and saw God's wisdom in action and how that he deals with fools and how we should deal with fools. I do hope you have enjoyed this content, and if you have, please give it a like, share, subscribe, and comment down below and tell me exactly what you think of the Proverbs study thus far and if it is helping you. And if you have anything that you would like to ask, I would be more than happy to oblige and answer any questions you may have. Join me next time as we take a look into Proverbs chapter 27. But until then, may you have a blessed day.